CB Insights, we've been running a, a newsletter focused on tracking sort of innovation, startup formation, and, and activity in the insurance industry since since late 2015, and it's been fascinating to watch this, uh, you know, now ecosystem or space evolve. So we'll just do a very short presentation and get the get the uh, panelists on stage. Um, you know, I think it's it's funny, like to see comments like this, uh, which I don't think you would have maybe expected to see. You know, a comment like this out of a boardroom of a major insurance carrier, but it shows you like how how much you know some of the incumbents. Uh, you know, the major carriers, insurers, or reinsurers also are, are, are really paying attention to, to what's happening uh, on, on the tech side and in some of the startups now that are in the insurance industry. Um, you know, this is from uh, Admiral Group CEO David Stevens who said, you know, he thinks many of the ideas won't work in practice because of some reasons and, and most of our customers want the opposite. It's just interesting to see that now uh, given, given sort of what we've observed. Um, you know, when you, I think this is, this slide is probably a little more relevant maybe a couple years ago when we saw a lot more of the startup formation, but I just want to go through them very quickly. Um, why we're seeing a little bit more, or much more rather, uh, you know, startup formation and investment in, in the insurance industry. Um, you know, one thing is we're seeing, you know, uh, this is a, a great um, survey and study that was done by our friends at Reinsurance Group of America, looking at just sort of uh, product innovation and sort of idea to launch uh, for different products in the life, uh, life space. And I think it was, it's interesting to see, you know, the average amount of time from idea to launch, um, and also different perspectives, both from you know the carriers who are you know the product, the producers of these policies, as well as the ones who are people who are selling them, and then also the consumers. There's also a, a big disconnect in terms of that, but also just sort of the amount of time it takes to to create new products. Um, the other thing is, you know, insurance. I'm sure, as most of you know, you know, you, a lot of people here probably get their renters or, or homeowners insurance or their uh, you know, the, the car insurance, and you're not really interacting or engaging with your carrier in any meaningful way outside of maybe a claim uh, or, or sort of a payment. So, you know, I think what's interesting is when you see even a, a one, you know, touch point or, or uh, one additional touch point, you actually see uh, a big difference in net promoter score, and it, some, you know, in different geog geographies than others. Um, but just speaking to that sort of engagement um, that insurers have, and then I think, you know, there's a lot of different emergent risks now. You talk about uh, cyber threats and, 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 you know, many others. But if you think about sort of just where S&P 500 market value has gone over the last 30 years um, and where sort of maybe the new risks are versus the risks that are currently being insured and how those risks are being underwritten, uh, I think also begs question. Obviously, you know, the, the low rate in my environment from a macro perspective has also impacted things you see here. Uh, looking at PNC, obviously affects life as well. But without, uh, with low rates, you're seeing you know carriers really want to think about maybe pursuing a pilot or, or interaction with some of these startups who can inject some sort of uh, digitization or, or alternative distribution and starting to experiment more, just given sort of the macro environment for insurers as well, who, who aren't really you know seeing much on the investment income side. So I think. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people talk about sort of millennials and, and different changing perspectives for insurance buyers. I thought this was an interesting survey that uh, AXA did a little while ago on, you know, if you could buy your smart insurance policy on your smartphone, would you? Uh, almost half uh, the respondents, about a little over a thousand respondents said yes. So certainly a lot happening, right? A lot of different shifts that are, that are changing. Um, and, you know, insurance startups have certainly arrived. We've seen a lot of, of uh, activity in this space, um, many of which are selling into uh, consumers and small businesses, you know, new, hopefully more transparent digital offerings to buy, you know, manage your insurance policies. Um, and I think, you know, we, we listened to the early stage panel earlier today. You heard different perspectives from, from NEA and Homebrew, you know, one of which said this is a hot, you know, insurance is a pretty hot area. Others said, you know, there's um, some snake oil being sold here and there's a lot of, a lot of startups here that aren't really meeting the criteria for you know, really much better product experience. Um, you know, I think if you look at just the numbers, there certainly are a number of, of investments being made now um, in the hundreds, and you can, you know, it's hard to imagine hundreds of, of new sort of insurance upstarts succeeding at a level of scale that, that maybe a, a venture a, a scale business might require, but, but certainly a lot of interest to find those companies. And I think out of this, you maybe will see uh, certain, certain different some players emerge who are, who are taking the hard work and sort of patience to, to do that. And you, you see here sort of the investment figures over time. We've certainly seen the interest by investors continued in 2017. Um, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but you're seeing this across a lot of different lines of business and insurance, some of the early stage activity we're seeing in the space today. 
Um, you know, Lemonade, who we have on the panel, is a, a homeowners and a renters insurance uh, startup carrier. Uh, you see some of their numbers that they released, um, as well as some of the market there. But you know, this thesis that maybe you know consumers are are interested in in pursuing uh, these more digital in, uh, insurance offerings and, and trusting these brands. I think in some ways we're still starting to see that now, and and some of that um, that thesis sort of taking hold. Um, you know, obviously insurance technology is developing quite differently around the world. If you think about markets like China, for example, where the scale is sort of enormous and you have these large platform players like Ant Financial and, and Tencent. You see here some of the numbers from a, a carrier called Zongan Insurance. Uh, latest valuation, uh, 4 billion cumulative policies sold. You know, a lot of these are, are very small, different, uh, somewhat might say exotic policies, but a lot of them also are very um, tied into certain you know, aspects like uh, returning uh, shipping on, on, on sort of uh, Alipay, uh, on Alibaba's marketplaces. So certainly interesting to see some of the scale develop in certain aspects of the world where you're seeing this develop very differently than the U.S. obviously with state-by-state -state regulation and so forth. Um, a lot of startups we're seeing, uh, or have seen rather, in, in, in the small commercial, small business side of, of things, a lot of different companies now that, that we're seeing emerge. Uh, you know, like Next Insurance, like Embroker, who are looking to take sort of more tech-driven ways to, to get, you know, either specialized coverage for different uh, industries like personal trainers, photographers, or, or trying to build sort of a platform to, um, to help sort of small businesses better manage uh, the, their insurance. Um, you know, but on the other side of things, you know, it, it takes a long time to build. This is a, this is a market, for example, that, that is very uh, difficult to scale into. And insurance just in general, I think, is going to be a very long when in terms of innovation, and we're seeing some of that consumer adoption push in. For example, if you think about Hiscox, which is a carrier in the UK, but uh, recently, uh, not recently, a few years ago, started a direct uh, business for, for the small business side in, in the US, and they've recently surpassed about 100 million in premium, but it took you know, almost seven years to get there. So it's certainly not a short amount of time uh, by any means. Obviously, we've seen, you know, and, and judging by a lot of the, you, know, you guys here at the conference, we've definitely seen a lot of response from carriers and reinsurers. Uh, in a lot of different ways, whether that's tracking sort of investments, whether it's tracking uh, different partnerships that have taken place, or even in some cases, um, certain new products that, are, that insurers are trying to develop. Um, there's never been more insurers investing in tech startups, probably ever. I mean, this is, uh, this, this looks, this goes into uh, Q2 2012, uh, sorry, Q2 uh, 2017, and uh, it, it's amazing to see that growth as you see a lot of new corporate venture groups in the insurance industry crop up. Um, and you know what's interesting is you're actually now seeing a lot of uh, strategic investors now take lead investments in, in different startups, some of which are more complementary, but others that are you know obviously uh, very strategic to these insurance carriers. You're seeing firms like Munich Re and, and uh, Mass Mutual and others who are now actually leading investments into, into early stage companies um, and some pretty sizable rounds as well. Munich Re, uh, for example, is a reinsurer which is actively investing in startups, but also you know, actively partnering, and in some cases doing both, partnering and investing, um, you know, recently launched their, their partnership program to help uh, startups with, with capacity and, and, and other sort of uh, strategic value that they provide. Um, and, you know, and since then have already disclosed, I think now 11 partnerships. So pr moving pretty fast in terms of integrating themselves into the startup ecosystem. Uh, you're seeing initiatives like Allstate launch uh, Arity, which is this standalone telematics unit they launched in 2016 but collecting data for drivers and, and playing this out analytics, including potentially uh, to other insurers, which is quite interesting. You see a comment there from their CEO on their earnings call. Um, and in some cases, we've seen some acquisitions. Travelers, for example, made a big acquisition uh, in the small business space, acquiring a UK startup called Simply Business. And you know, a lot of insurers also thinking about you know, to acquire this talent as well as the technology, um, doing so through, through M&A, and we're, we're seeing a little of that as, already as well. Um, so, you know, looking forward, I think you know the panels will do a good job of describing some of them, you know, better than we can here. But uh, we're seeing a lot of um, a lot of hoopla or a lot of interest around different usages of, of AI, machine learning, whether that's on sort of analyzing data sources to help underwriting, for example, on, on maybe property space with with uh, geospatial imagery, or applying that to claims. You're seeing a lot more interest bubble up in, in how this will be applied. Um, you know, and whether that's met with, with, the, uh, with the response from carriers will be interesting as well, where you see certain cultures in, in different carriers uh, bear weight as, you know, carriers that have very strong underwriting cultures, for example, may not uh, be so happy about this. But it'll be interesting to see how, how some of this bears out over time. Um, and we're seeing a lot more partnerships as well. Um, 
both startups who are you know finding their way into uh, interesting distribution partnerships and and maybe we'll see you know a lot more sort of collaboration on in, in the fintech side um, that includes obviously a lot of the insurance startups that are now cropping up so I think lots to talk about um, you're seeing a lot of startups taking on very specific lines of business you're seeing uh, you know start incumbents look to sort of fight that that lack of engagement and, and find different complementary technologies to invest or partner in to help them on that side so there's a lot of questions I think um, and excited to have Sonali uh, introduce the panel, and it should be uh, should be a fun discussion. So thanks very much.